Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Whistle is your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And remember... Let every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Smart Boy. Fifteen minutes after Verna had called him on the phone, Steve Carson was walking into the entrance of her apartment. Inside, he was raging at her. Outside, he looked cool as a piece of ice. Ten years as a private detective had given him that. The nonchalance outside, in spite of the burn-up underneath. Yes, Steve was a top-notch detective. A smart boy. Smart enough to see when Verna came along five years ago that investigation fees were chicken fees. What with Verna's beauty and his ability, there was real money on the other side of the line, in blackmail. It had turned out to be a great thing, an unbeatable combination. And as he left the automatic elevator at the end of the corridor and walked down to her apartment, he thought what a shame it was that Verna could be so naive as to think she could change it with a simple phone call. Oh, it's you, Stevie. Hello, darling. Come in. We've been expecting you. Oh? I could tell by your attitude on the telephone that you were unhappy, dear. You know Randy Summers, of course. Well, Mr. Carson, nice of you to drop in. Then I want to talk to you alone. Sit down, won't you? Randy, darling, fix him a drink. Of course. Looks like he could use one. (laughs) You are irritated, aren't you, Stevie? I can always tell. The corners of your mouth sort of twitch and your jaw muscles bulge. Are you going to get that guy out of here? No. I like having him around. You think I'm going to hold still for this? I think so. Well, that's a bad guess. If he stays, I go. Are we going through all that again? I'm not playing second horn, baby. If you want a new stooge, that's your business. If I want to quit, that's mine. (laughs) Darling, you sound positively jealous. Oh, you couldn't have picked a better partner. He even looks like a heel. I should have known better than to get mixed up in a rotten mess anyway. Stevie, dear, I'm surprised at you. You didn't think it was so rotten when you were getting your share of the profit. I'm washed up, Verna. I'm a private eye, not an errand boy. Get that through your head. Or would you rather I put it down in writing? In writing? My dear fella, surely you should know by now never to put anything in writing that concerns Verna. Stay out of this, Summers. Sit down, Stevie. Oh, I'm afraid our Mr. Carson isn't going to be the least bit cooperative tonight, is he, darling? Uh, here's your drink, old man. Now, see here, Carson, I can take just so much okay, of you. Okay, and that case... Stop it, both of you. You're acting like you. Let go of him, Steve. All right. Now, look here. This sort of thing isn't going to get you anywhere. I told you once before how things stand. Randy and I are running the show from now on, and we'll let you know when we need you. Is that clear? Yeah, it's all right. If it works. Randy and I are satisfied with it, aren't we, dear? Of course. <laughs> Summers, old man, did it ever occur to you that one of these days Verna would slip you the same fast shuffle she gave me? I, uh, have a feeling she won't. You see, Stevie? (laughs) We trust each other. Okay, Verna. 
This is your round. Meaning there might be others? Could be. Uh, what about our dear friend Charles W. Ralston? Hmm. Charles W. Ralston. Suppose I were to tell him about the letters. Why, you wouldn't stoop to that, would you, Stevie? What do you suppose Ralston would do if he found out he'd been paying for letters that were burned up three months ago? What? Is that true, Verna? Well, what if it is? What happened? A little fire, Summers. An accident at Verna's cabin. She kept the letters there. Oh, the cabin, eh? Wasn't that the one he built for you as a uh, contribution to the cause? Yes. It was nice of him, wasn't it, Stevie? Oh, you'll love it, Randy. Way off in the mountains overlooking Lake Tahoe. Quiet and peaceful. Miles from anyone. Wonderful. It was lucky we were there at the time, so it wasn't a total loss. You know, Steve, I think I'll have to have that old-fashioned ceiling lamp removed. It's too dangerous. The same thing could happen again. Get and... back to the point, Verna. What about the letters? Well, since you brought it up, Stevie, with some nasty little insinuations that you might possibly tell Mr. Ross. What makes you think I won't? Well, let's see. There's the McCray case. And that swindle on the Falstrom woman. Mm -hmm. And there's a few other enterprises you wouldn't want the D.A. to know about. Oh, a skeleton in the private investigator's closet, eh? They could put you away for years and years, Stevie. And I know how you feel about short haircuts. No, darling, I don't think you're going to tell Mr. Ralston anything. You're going to go right on doing little favors for me. Without the usual percentage. You'll do it just for, shall we say, old times, sake, In memory of... Well, let's let it go at that. In memory. Very touching, darling. I had no idea Mr. Carson was so uh, sentimental. What do you say, Steve? Okay, Verna. Really, it's the only sensible way to look at it. Uh, come on, let's have a drink on it. Oh, by all means. And this time, old man, shall we try not to spill it? It's awfully good scotch. Randy, uh, uh, please. Oh, certainly. Steve, there are a few little things I'd like to discuss with you. Yeah? Randy's flying down to Los Angeles tonight, and when he gets back, he'll join me at the cabin. The cabin? I'm going up alone tomorrow afternoon. Why don't you come up for the weekend, and we'll talk things over? I don't know, Verna. I... It'll do you a lot of good. Mountain air, you know. Well, I could let you know in the morning. Good. Well, I guess I'd better be sliding along. Stevie. Yeah? You do understand, don't you? About Randy and me? Everything's going to work out all right. Hmm? Sure, Verna. Sure. <laughs> It's the prologue of Smart Boy. The Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Miller. Isn't it time for tonight's big news? Oh, you mean about Signal Premium, the amazing new motor oil that actually keeps motors six times cleaner, reduces cylinder wear one-third? You can say that again. It's a fact. New Signal Premium motor oil actually keeps motors six times cleaner, reduces cylinder wear one-third. And you want to know the reason? Compounding does it. You see, into today's finest 100% pure paraffin base oil, Signal now blends five scientific new compounds that make Signal premium motor oil far outperform today's finest uncompounded oil. You mean compounds are added to new Signal premium motor oil like vitamins and minerals are added to food to make them more beneficial? Right. Compound number one actually cleanses the motor of old carbon. Compound two prevents harmful varnish, gum, and sludge. Compound three improves oil circulation to vital engine parts. Compound four keeps oil from thinning out when your motor's hot. And compound five protects costly bearings from corrosion. No wonder new Signal Premium motor oil outperforms all uncompounded oil. Check. And no wonder drivers who want their motors to run smoother, last longer, are switching fast. Switching to the new Signal Motor Oil. The oil that keeps motors six times cleaner. Reduces cylinder wear one-third. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. And now, back to the whistler.
Yes, Steve. You're a smart boy. Smart enough to know there's only one way to handle Vernon now. Five prosperous years as her partner in the rather hazardous enterprise of blackmail have given you a healthy respect for her intelligence. And you're too smart to force the show down yet. The corners of your mouth are twitching again as you think about her. It's too bad, in a way, that she thought she could force you to stooge for Randy Summers, the new boy. She was a nice kid. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it, Steve? You're thinking about her in the past tense already. Only ten minutes after you left her at the apartment. Your mouth is still twitching as you stop in front of another apartment and walk up to a door with a brass plate on it in the name of Charles W. Ralston. I don't think you know me, Mr. Ralston. I'm afraid I don't. Steve Carson, private investigator. Oh? I came to see you about a... a Miss Verna Sheldon. I'm sorry I don't. I have a proposition, Mr. Ralston. Very well. You know all about the letters, of course. Mr. Ralston, you're a pretty influential businessman in the city, and also a man, shall we say... Uh, not without enemies? A man in my position is bound to have a few. Exactly. Now, let's suppose Miss Sheldon's letters were to fall into the hands of the wrong people. She's assured me they won't. Ah, oh, you don't know her. Suppose she were to sell those letters to a group of individuals for a sum much greater than you could afford to pay. She wouldn't. Oh, but she would. And is. I've been able to find out that much and a little more. Shall I go on? Of course. She's going up to her cabin tomorrow. Over the weekend, someone will contact her there to make the transaction. You'll have to work fast if you want the letters. What's your proposition? I think I can break up that little meeting before it ever takes place. You can get the letters for me? Yes. How much? My fees run a little high for this sort of thing. How much, Carson? $25,000. I can't possibly get it. You don't think it's worth it, considering your position? I, I couldn't, Carson. $25,000. Well, think it over. And do make up your mind soon, Ralston. I'll call you sometime tomorrow morning. Oh, by the way, do you still own that cabin? I sold it. I, uh, I thought it was a gift. It's on the records as a sale to Miss Sheldon. Okay. I guess I'll run along. Just a moment. You're quite certain she's planning to sell those letters? Quite certain. How do I know this isn't another one of her tricks? And how do I know you're not in league with her? That's just a chance you'll have to take, Mr. Austin. Hmm. Good night. <laughs> The next move is the big one, isn't it, Steve? There's the matter of the defective kerosene lamp in Verna's cabin at Lake Tahoe. The same lamp that exploded once before and caused the fire that burned Mr. Ralston's letters. A thing like that is liable to happen again, isn't it, Steve? Particularly since you arrive at the cabin five hours later, equipped with five gallons of high-test gasoline, and proceed to change the possibility into a certainty. It takes you a half hour to set it up in a way you can't possibly miss. And when you're through, you carefully raise the huge lamp again on its creaking chain, lock the cabin door, and leave. You can see Vernon now arriving at the cabin, pulling the lamp down. There's the flick of a match, an explosion, and a fire to remove any trace of your visit. By 8 o'clock, you're back in town to call on Verna, as you promised to regret that you can't accompany her and to make sure her visit is coming off on schedule. Well, if it isn't smart, boy. O'Hara. Right. I don't get it. You will. Come in. I'm standing by. The lieutenant just left on an errand. Yeah? What errand? You. Come on, O'Hara. What's the pitch? What are the police doing here? I was just going to ask you what you're doing here. Yeah? Suppose you tell me first, huh? I was calling on Verna. Any particular reason? Business. I see. She's over there, if you want to. Where? Under the blanket. What are you talking about? Slight case of homicide, Steve. A blood instrument, to coin a phrase. <sighs> Surprised to you? Yeah, I... I wonder. Wait a minute. You don't, you don't think I... You have... and she were in business together, huh? What kind of business? Investigations. Uh -huh. And she had something you wanted pretty bad and she wouldn't give. That's right, isn't it? Suppose I don't answer that one. 
Okay. We'll have plenty of time to go into that later. Tell the lieutenant he can reach me at my office. Oh? Going so soon? Yeah. Okay. Just one thing, Steve. I'd stick around pretty close if I were you because, uh, well, I've got a hunch the DA would like a little chat. Uh, when you get the time. <laughs> That stopped you cold, didn't it, Steve? Alibi. 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 Flashing on and off in your brain like a neon sign. Everything you figured on, planned for, set up just like a spring trap and everything gone. Verna's dead. You're the number one suspect. And you were driving on a lonely mountain road on an errand you can't explain at the moment she was killed. That'll sound great in court, won't it? But there's one thing you're sure of. Ralston killed her. There's no question about it. The talk last night. The deadline you tossed up to him. Yes, it was Ralston, all right. It takes you five minutes to get to a phone booth in a corner drugstore. Mr. Ralston's resident. Steve Carson calling. I'd like to speak to Mr. Ralston, please. He hasn't come down yet this morning. I've got to talk to him. This is important. Oh, but, sir, I... I... Listen, whoever you are, you run up to Ralston and tell him Steve Carson's on the phone. He'll talk. Very well, Mr. Carson. Oh, here's Mr. Ralston now. Good. Come on, come on, Ralston. What's holding you? Hello, Carson? Listen, Ralston, I've got to see you right away. Something wrong? You know what I'm talking about. Just stay put. I'm on my way over. I'm expected at the office in 20 minutes. I'm afraid You're going to stay right where you are. Do you want me to talk to you, or would you rather I did my talking to the police? I'll be here, Mr. Carson. Mind if I sit down, Ralston? Go ahead. And sit over here. No, you better close the door first. Oh? Your man, Shermerhorn's got big ears. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Now, Mr. Carson. I guess you know why I'm here, or are you going to give me that I don't know what you're talking about routine? Well, really, Mr. Carson. I'll get right to the point. I'm here for two reasons. The first is that I'm sure you knocked off Verna Sheldon as if I'd been there watching you. Oh, don't look so surprised, Ralston. I had nothing to do with it. Don't give me that. I didn't get any farther into the joint than the entrance hall, and I could see it had been gone over with a fine tooth comb. Maybe someone looking for those letters, huh? Someone who figured tomorrow night might be too late? Why are you so interested? I've been put in a rather awkward position, Ralston. You, uh, have the letters? One thing at a time. My good friend Sergeant O'Hara seems to think I killed her. Unfortunately, it looks like my only defense is to prove you did it. That is, unless... Unless what? Unless I come through with an alibi... I know you killed her, Alston, and I've been in the business long enough to know that all I've got to do to hang you is to flash those letters in the DA's office. You... you have them? I know where to get them. I've got to have them, Carson. I'll do anything... Now, now you're talking. First, there are a few things I must know. Did anyone see you at Verna's apartment last night? I didn't go to her apartment last night. Okay. We're going to dig up those letters. So long, Ralston. Wait a minute. Okay. I... I did it. I killed her. I had to. I would have been ruined. Ah, that's if... better. Now, you wouldn't have just hopped a cab and gone over there to knock her off, Ralston. You've got a better head than that. You must have been somewhere else at the time, huh? No one saw me. First, I went down to the yacht harbor. I have a boat there. What time? 10.15. Okay, 45 minutes to go. No one saw me at first, but a short time after I went aboard the boat, the night watchman came by and called out to me from the dock. He'd seen the light on the boat. What time? 10.30. He talked to you? Yes. So as far as he was concerned, you were on the boat between 10.15 and when? He didn't see me again until I'd come back the second time after. After that. you knocked off Verna. What time? 11.30. Perfect. I couldn't have done much better myself, Ralph. I was lucky. I spoke to the watchman at 11.30 when I was leaving for the night. Anyone else around? Uh, yes, yes. There were several men a few yards ahead of me. I, I think they came from the club. And the watchman will recall there were others when you spoke to him. Huh? I suppose so. It was rather dark, but I think he must have noticed them. Oh, that's good enough for me. 
Now, listen, Ralston, no one has any idea you were connected with Verna except me. I think they'll take you at your word. Probably won't even consider you a suspect. What are you getting at? You're my alibi, Ralston. I was with you on the boat all the time, remember? Well, I... You, uh, aren't holding out on me, are you? No, it's not that. That alibi is worth a lot of money to me, Ralston. I might even be willing to forget about the 25000 The watchman didn't see you go on the boat alone. He didn't see you leave when you went to Verna's apartment, and no one saw you come back. And when you finally checked with them just before going home, there were others around. Now, <laughs> that makes an alibi for both of us. What about the letters? Forget it. Where are they? You won't find them, Ralston. You almost tore the joint to pieces and you couldn't find them. I could have told you they weren't there. You're going to go on bleeding me, aren't you? Just the way she did. <laughs> Still don't trust me, do you? Listen, Carson. Bring the letters here and I'll give you the cash tonight. No, no, let's wait until the investigation's over, huh? It's safer that way. For Stevie. Well, Steve... It's like sitting in on a poker game, isn't it? You're leaning back now, watching each of them play their high cards, knowing all the time you have the topper up your sleeve. Randy Summers, the new boy, is on his way back from Los Angeles. And you know that 30 seconds after he finishes his story of what happened between you and Verna on the evening of the murder, the DA will be on the phone asking for the answer. There's nothing to do now but wait. Thursday... Friday. And then, Saturday morning, you open the door of your office. Hello, smart boy. I've been waiting for you. What's on your mind, O'Hara? Oh, just like to have a little talk with you, that's all. About the Sheldon dame. What else? You were good friends, weren't you? Sure. I mean, uh, particularly good friends. So what? So, I understand things suddenly went sour. Ah, a little pigeon flew in from L.A. and slipped you that, huh? You denying threatening her because she shook you for this summer's guy? We had a slight disagreement, that's all. You had three beefs with her. The first was a week ago at her apartment. The second was the next day in a downtown bar. Mm -hmm. And don't say you didn't because Summers says so, and so does the bartender. The third one was on the night she was killed, just after she called you on the phone and told you it was all off. Now, what was the beef? I, uh, disliked the hat she was wearing. Sure. So much you told her you were going to wring her neck. Did I say that? Never mind the stall. I haven't even started yet, chum. That dame had something on you, didn't she? Did she? Why didn't you tell me you were up at her apartment on the night of the murder? You didn't ask me, O'Hara. Summers was there, too, incidentally. He was still there when I left. He caught the 945 plane at the airport. We checked it. Now, you were there at 7.30. Right. The first time. What do you mean, the first time? You didn't go back around 10.30? What are you talking about, O'Hara? It seems the Sheldon dame got a phone call at 9.15 just before Summers left. And, uh was from you. Wait a minute. You're all wrong. I didn't make it. You made an appointment to see her at 10.30. That's a lie. Did you keep it, Carson? Someone's been giving you a line. Summers was there when the call came in. He told him it was you. Said you were coming back. He wanted to stick around in case you got rough, but she told him she could handle it. So he took his plane. The guy's lying, O'Hara. Wait a minute. You can work out an answer on the way down to the Hall of Justice. The moment you're under arrest. Suspicion of murder. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, I wish we had television so you could see the photographs I have here of two pistons taken from two identical motors. The only difference was that one motor used new signal premium motor oil, while the other used uncompounded oil. But what a difference in those pistons. After 79,000 miles of driving, the one using new signal premium is relatively clean, unworn. 
while the other piston, using uncompounded motor oil, shows six times as much carbon deposit, 50% more cylinder wear. Yes, those five compounds in new Signal Premium Oil really make a difference. Ask your Signal dealer to show you his unretouched photos, proving how Signal Premium Oil keeps motors six times cleaner, reduces cylinder wear one-third. My bet is when you see these photos, you'll want to make your next oil change a change for the better, a change to the new Signal Oil with five compounds added. Five compounds that make it outperform all uncompounded oils, barring none. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. And now, back to the Whistler. Steve, it's quite a poker hand, isn't it? O'Hara and Summers have played their cards, but you still have the topper up your sleeve. That phone call was a shock. Summers is too stupid to have dreamed that one up all by himself. You try and figure it out as you sit in the ante room, waiting to see District Attorney Skelly. He must have been telling the truth. For some reason or other, Verna didn't want him to know who called and told him it was you. It was Ralston, of course, pleading for his letters again. And when she turned him down, he decided to kill her. Good old Ralston. You knew you'd need that top card, didn't you, Steve? But you had no idea you'd need it this badly. Hello, Carson. Hello, D.A. Doesn't look so good, does it? I hate to see you guys make monkeys out of yourself, Skelly, but if you... Just a minute, Steve. I have a few questions to ask you. Although I don't think it'll make much difference. Got it all figured out, huh? Just about good. Now, if you'll stop figuring long enough to ask me where I was at the time of the murder, maybe we'll all have a great big laugh. Okay. The floor is yours. I was on a boat at the Yacht Harbor talking over some confidential business with a client of mine. Yeah? Who? He's a pretty important guy, Skelly. I suppose his name's confidential, too. No, not at all. Charles W. Ralston, Vice President of State Savings and Loan. Is that good enough? Ralston? If you don't believe me, get on the phone and call him. You're serious about this? Sure. Go ahead, call him up. You better brace yourself, Carson. Mm -hmm. Ralston was burned to death in a cabin at Lake Tahoe early this morning. Seems a coal oil lamp exploded or something. A couple of rangers saw the flames and... Something... Wrong? Carson? Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Adrian Jean Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular Signal Oil stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>